Hello and welcome to The Last Word on Spurs. We do hope you're keeping very, very safe and well. Thank you so much for joining us. A little later than usual. You're going to laugh when I say later than usual because these shows are getting later and later when we put the start time on. So please forgive us. If you're listening to the show for the first time, you can find us on iTunes or on Spotify. We're across all major audio platforms. We're, of course, on Twitter at Last Word on Spurs. We're on Facebook and Instagram too. And we are back providing you with instant reaction to Tottenham Hotspur's penultimate pre-season game before the real stuff starts. Before the real stuff starts. Talk about the real stuff. We've got the real stuff here tonight. We're joined by two of British finest actors you'll ever find. And look, a worldly entertainment host on a compare. And you're going to wonder how much they boys are paying me to say that. I'll let you be the judge of that. Back on Last Word on Spurs. Look, co-hosting, he's back with us a lot, of course, this season. What's to come on the crazy train, as Macca calls it. It's been a bit of a clown's car on fire defensively. I'm not going to steal his line. We've got the wonderful Richard Cracknell back in the house. Cracks, how are you, bud? Evening, Rick. Evening, everyone. The heart man and Ricky J. Norwood in the house. In the house. Hey. <laughs> yeah, all, all good. And uh, buoyant, Rick. Buoyant, I think, is a good word this evening. Liking what I see and uh, cautious optimism when Ange first came. But as I said on uh, the social medias earlier, X or Twitter or whatever it's called this week, um, I'm all in. I love him. I absolutely love him for 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 a myriad of reasons. He's he's the, he's the man, isn't he? He really is the man. So, I mean, obviously a little bit more on him later. But um, yeah, I can't I can't not be op- optimistic. Optimistic. Smile on me face. Watching yeah. some good football, some front foot football, and uh, yeah, long may that long may that continue. Yeah, you can argue, Cracks. We can't be optimistic, optimistic during preseason. If I can say the word, God, when can we be optimistic? Because um, yeah. look, the only way you do feel now is moving forward. I've seen smiles on faces. I mean, you haven't seen these in the mm. last six months. I did remind a lot of people. I've said to us, we're really looking forward to this panel tonight. The last time these boys were assembled was that dire, and it was him as well. Unfortunately, in the team at the nil-nil. Yeah, AC Milan under Conte, which feels a long, long time ago now. So anything will be more than positive than that. To dare is to not do, of course, as we remember. Look, one of two of Britain's finest actors back on our screens. He's been with us regularly on Last Word on Spurs and continues to be so. We've got the wonderful Ricky J. Norwood back. Rick's is, look, is a smile there. Rick's, how are you, bud? <laughs> I'm good, my friend. I am good. I am, um, I'm really kind of buoyant, like uh, Crackers just said there. I'm happy, you know. Uh, not only to be on tonight with you lovely gentlemen, um, but to witness a good game of football uh, and to get a taster of what's to come. So I'm ready to dive in. I'm ready to get on the old uh, Big Ange train and I'm uh, ready to go, bro. So let's have it. Come on, you Spurs. Absolutely, let's have it, most certainly. This man, look, he was offering us therapy tools in the last season. God, what they were doing to us. Many were asking, was he charging for it? I won't even admit that on air, what his prices were. We've got the wonderful actor... Extraordinary, the one of all the heart man's back. We need the heart in this team. Dow, how are you, bud? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to be back. Pre season is now over for me. Those of you who've seen, I've disappeared off the radar, but I'm back in the building. I said, I'm not doing speculation, I'm only doing confirmation. And the season is about to start, so I'm back. I mean, the worrying thing is, Dow, the longer you were going to go, people were going to change the manager again. There was such a decision <laughs> in Tottenham. So there wasn't, there no, wasn't no, 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 we're, we're holding on for a while now. We're holding on for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was that apparent concern, but I did reflect there and say, don't worry, Dow will be here at least for the start of the Potter Coglu era. Can't do, can't take until he'll be towards the end of it, but there you go. Who knows what's going to happen in this next hour and a bit. Look, um, one thing I do want to say today, having been to that stadium, is that I really, really enjoyed the fact the way that was actually was, um, that was priced today. There's a lot of young Tottenham fans there. And I think, again, it sends out a reminder, can I just say, to the football club that what's going on right now in terms of the match day hike, that it was so nice to see young Spurs fans looking forward to seeing the next generation of players to come through under a new manager. So just a reminder that, look, whilst many will feel today, that's maybe not the regular Spurs fans that go week in, week out. And again, a la to our away fans who are absolutely superb. I've got to say, it was lovely seeing this kind of new wave of young Spurs fans that were there for the first time. And long may that continue, because I think that's the one thing we have to remember is that where Spurs are right now, um, you maybe argue that as a kid and being asked the question, who do you want to support? Um, as much as you know what we've been put through and family try and brainwash you that Spurs are the greatest club to support, um, there'll be when you go to school tough times. So well done to all the young Spurs fans out there that are ready for even more pain to come. But look, let's hope there's some absolute glory along the way. 
That is, of course, what we're here for and we're providing you with on this show. And we'll be reflecting, of course, on that 5-1 win against Shakhtar Donetsk. A poignant game, I must say, obviously, a charity game as well. And my thoughts to everybody, of course, that are suffering in, of course, Ukraine at this very, very sad time. Cracks, I'm going to open up the show with you. Look, we could be well having some fun this season. We've seen registering 69 shots on goal in the first two friendlies of the summer. Then we had a total of 31 shots against Shakhtar Donetsk earlier on this Sunday evening. Meaning that in the three friendlies we've had so far, 100 plus shots from Tottenham. I mean, it was so bizarre for me to actually see us playing over the halfway line today at home. I just couldn't quite believe it. I was pinching myself that time. But Harry Kane cutting through the noise in another five goal win for Ange Postacoglu's team in pre-season. Four goals, of course, for that man, Harry Kane. And we'll be coming to him towards the end of the show. We do still see those frailties defensively. And we'll be coming on to the man that's hopefully going to solve them in Mickey van der Ven. And also a great finish from Dane Scarlett to bring the game to a close. Cracks, overall thoughts of that win today against Shatter Donetsk? So, um, over 100 shots and we scored five today. Um, we didn't get any against Leicester, obviously. West Ham, what was the score in that game again, Rick? 3-2, uh, three, three, two, two. Three, two. Three, two. Uh, yep. loss, wasn't it? So that's yep. seven. And then we played the, the other game. That the we Lion the, City the, Sailors. All that's of them. right. Like, and that was, <laughs> that was uh, what a band they were. I think I saw them at, uh, <laughs> I think I saw them at Glastonbury in 1989. <laughs> Lion City Sailors. Good they were. Supporting uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Fantastic. Um, and what did we get in that? Five, wasn't it? That was five. So, eventually. Yeah, that was five. Yeah. So that's yeah, 12 yeah. goals. 100 shots. Yep. Well, sell Kane. That's only a ten percent return on them hundred <laughs> shots. Sell him. It's no good. It's just that's that's not that's not enough goals, is it? But <laughs> no. Listen, a hundred plus shots. I mean, did we have a hundred shots under the whole of the Conte era? I mean, I'd be interested to see how many it took to get to a hundred shots. Like, but anyway, that that's, that's in the past, a rhetorical question. Um, yeah. Again, Rick, another game of getting forward, nice football, Madison, a joy to watch, you know, uh, Solomon, La Celso, Saar. Wow. I mean, what a player he, he looks like he, he, he could be. I mean, we've got to get into the, you know, meat and veg of the, um, of the season yet. So, I mean, let's not get too carried away. It's a pre-season, but it, it looks a real, real prospect, real prospect. So there's, there's much to be optimistic about there. But again, it's that clown's car on fire, isn't it, Rick? At the back, it just looks shaky. Some of it, I think, comes from the formation because of the way we push and press we do leave ourselves really open um for a ball over the tops i think uh, over the top one of one of our own jason mcgovern on our whatsapp group um i think called it earlier that your full backs need to be stopping them crosses coming in firstly that's that's where we need to get some uh, get some business on the pitch done so that, that they need cutting out. But then if that ball does get across and get into the middle, we look very, very, very vulnerable. Um, and as we've seen, because we face very, very few shots and there's been a fair return uh, in goals uh, percentage wise over what, what has come in. So, um, but again, coming back to Ange, as we were talking about at the top of the show, he gets asked a question post-match, Ali Gold put up. And he gives us lovely straight answer, and he just says, "Look, we, yeah, look, nah, yeah, yeah, look." As he, as they always say in Australia, yeah, no, look. And um, <laughs> he, he's he's offered up a straight answer, and he he said, "We're open to do some business to get a couple in in the middle of defence here." And I love that. There's no Nostradamus cryptic answers. There's nothing, you know. There's no throwing toys out the pram and. Oh, why don't you go and... Why do I have to take questions in a pre manager's press conference like somebody else was? Mate, because it's a manager's press conference. And I don't know if you noticed, you are the manager. So answer the questions. I mean, he's just given a straight answer. He's just said what we all see and what we're all seeing. And that's all you want. I mean, hopefully the club now fix that issue and do go out and get that business done. But at least we know that our manager 
is seeing it and calling it how we're seeing it. It was, uh, you know, in the past, there's that, that issue of like, what is he seeing? That answer he's just given, whoever it was, isn't what what we're seeing. It's a political answer. It's a tread in the line answer. And that's why I love him. There's just that real lovely, uh, not rudeness, just an honesty, just a real honesty. I get it. We need it. We're trying to get it done. That That's all we want. That is That is all we want. And sometimes I think the club is so scared of its own shadow with PR and things like that. You can't always win every game. You can't win a trophy every season. But if you go out there and just put on some good football, try your best, entertain, try and win games, try and win stuff. If you fall short and you've been honest with the way you play and honest in in press conferences and that, the right-minded same people will go, Okay, fair enough. This wasn't our year. This wasn't our day. That that is all you want. Just a little bit of flat out honesty. And and that's what he brings. So not just the football that I'm seeing, Rick, the honesty from the man and dealing with this whole Kane situation as well. I mean, that's tough. Oh, it's just tough. constant, it's constant, it's constant, it's, isn't it? It's unfair. I mean, there's no other word about it. It's really unfair, you know, for a man mm. that is having to come in, adapt to new players, new league, new country, and to have this mm. situation dominating really since the moment he walked through the door. I just Even if you've really been really there five years, Rick, it don't come three. down to him no. anymore. No. It's not, not down to the manager now. It's down to Harry Kane, um, whoever it is that's kicking the tyres wanting to buy him. And and our and our board and, and chair and chairman and, and members of the board. So the the manager, if we've been there five minutes or five years, his his hands are tied. But I like that. I've you know, I've got him at the moment. I'm gonna play. And until such times as he goes, this is what I'm gonna do. Lovely. Job done. Yeah. So it's just a nice honesty to the man. I love it. Agree. Philip asked a great question. Are Ricky and Darren in connecting rooms at the same hotel? I can tell you, just, <laughs> just to confirm, you can see both their hands there. So that would be, it is a, there's lots of things we do on last one on Spurs. That would be, that's, that's, the next, that, that's, the, that's the next side. I mean, these two, you could argue at some point in their lives, were joint at the hip, but that would be going to another level on last one Spurs. But we'll see what we can do throughout the show. You know we can do strange things on last one Spurs. Leave it with us. Rick's, come over to you. Look, Kane left that pitch to a stand ovation after scoring four goals in 41 minutes. I did say, look, we're not going to let the Kane situation dominate the show. We'll come on to it as appropriate as when we feel we need to do so. But it was a real captain's performance from him. He helps his side, of course, to that 5-1 win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Just, of course, the one final pre-season game to go into Barcelona. Ricks, do you feel we're starting to look season ready? I, I think we're definitely starting to click into gear a little bit and a lot more so than we was last season or in previous seasons. I mean, last season, especially when we started and we had that World Cup break, I was always kind of, some of the performances wasn't great, but I was always kind of waiting for us to click back into gear. You know, when we qualified for the Champions League under Conte, you saw that, that last period of games where we was flowing and we was exciting and we was attacking. And I was always waiting for that last season and it just never turned up. Um, so for me, the positives that I can see, for, especially from today, from the preseason, is firstly, it's the speed. It's the speed of the transitions. It's the speed of how quickly we get that ball up. It's how they're not frightened to play with each other, play one-touch football, to do step-overs, to find the free man. It's none of that horseshoe palaver. It's, it's, it's no backwards stepping. And, and playing that quickly, it doesn't allow the opposition to kind of figure out what you're doing. Like, you can catch them, like, you know, off guard when you're playing that quickly. You can turn them inside backwards. Look at all of those intricate passes today. Look at all of those triangles that they've done in their six-yard box, in their half. And, you know, one of the most impressive things that I saw today, I, I know we'll go into individual performances and stuff like that, but it, it looked like we had an extra two players on the field today. The, the, the way that we was pressing, the way that we had them pinned in, it looked like we had, a you know, at least, a, like one or two extra players on the field. So they're getting used to the system. They're overlapping. It's very fluid. It's very attacking. All of these things I'm liking to see. And one of the things that I'm really liking to see is that Ange has kind of given these played players the confidence and the freedom to go out there and to express themselves. They don't look scared. They don't look like they're within their, their, their shells. 
you know, Saar, for example, a, a young boy, and yes, we'll go on to it. And Darren had some great points about Saar earlier because we were talking about him earlier. But um, but he, him as a young young man coming in and just being able to go, yep, yeah, no worries, and feel free to run that midfield. Feel free to have a long shot. Feel free to take on a guy. It's, it's, it's throughout the side right now. And the problems have always been the same problems. Do you know what I mean? The, the goal we conceded, I know we'll go on to it, but the goal we've considered and the defenders, the, the centre-backs, is something that we've all known that we've needed, not for just this season, but for year in, year out. And one of those defenders was in the stand today. So there's a lot more to come from us. Um, I really liked, uh, I, I really liked uh, you, Doggy. The more I see him in that left-back role, the more I'm like, he's, he's, he's going to be dynamite. So there's so many exciting things that are happening with Tottenham right now. Even some of those lone players that have come back who we felt that didn't have a, a second chance, who we felt that was out the door, they've actually come back with a bit of freshness. They've actually come back with a smile on their face. That they're, they're actually, in geo, you know, speaking to another guy and encouraging him to come to Tottenham. This is Gio Lo Celso that has spoken to that, the, the striker, Velez, and has been like, don't worry, bruv, we've got you. Come, you're going to have a great time. For me, that's a great sign. So... The tide is definitely shifting. The energy is definitely shifting. Having a manager who is straightforward and a leader as well as a manager, a, a lot of politicians around the world could take a few notes from um, Ange Postacoglu and the way that he deals with a question and the way that he treats the people. Do you know what I mean? So I think we, I don't want to get too excited, but we are definitely in a much better place already. And Today was a taster. We we are nowhere near the the click, but today was a taster. And if that's a taster of what's to come, it's just exciting times ahead. So I'm ready to go for the season, brother. I'm ready to go. Whatever comes, let's have it. Strap him. It's going to be a fun ride. It will be a fun ride. Dow bringing you in. Love to have you back on. It really, really is. Look, the man has been the heart, <laughs> quite literally, of this show when he's been here, trying to give us some optimism, some confidence. But I think Dow coming over, like I say to you, and we took some really good stuff, of course, from that Lion City Sailors game. I can hear the laughter track in the background. And we transferred that over a match against what is a real European side in Shatter Donetsk. No matter what, what you make of them, they are. Um, there was a dominant performance. There was exciting stuff there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think we know defensively, there is still concerns. So that's the one thing that's really worried me so far. I feel like this preseason, in terms of tests, I'm not sure if we've had the most dominant tests that we could have done to really see more in terms of us defensively. I know people are going to laugh and say that because ultimately, when we have been under pressure and we have conceded chances, unfortunately Spurs have conceded goals. But look, I think there's one thing that's been guaranteed so far, Dale. It's goals, goals, goals. And there's so many attacking threats that are going to really really give us some optimism, some real enjoyment throughout, hopefully, this season. Dow, what do you make so far of this new-look side? And you are here to give us your verdict of and Postacoglu, thank God. <laughs> I'll share it all. I'll share it all. You know what? Because, um, obviously, I listen to the pod when I'm not here, so I've heard some beautiful statements and some beautiful things that I want to tie in. I'm going to go to you, Crackers, first. You mentioned before about your son's team when they changed manager and how mm -hmm. it, one season they were all not happy, they didn't perform well, new manager, they won, they won the league. And I think what we're seeing now, and I know people have spoke about the characters we have within our squad. Ricky, you just mentioned about when we wanted to sign the young striker, Lo Celso was on the phone saying, come over. Because what you're seeing now is people in a happy work environment. That makes all the difference. And right now, we have a manager who is creating an environment that everyone is happy with because you've got players now playing their natural game. We have stifled players for a number of seasons. And we spoke about putting um, square pegs into round holes and all the misfits and the misfits of managers, X, Y, and Z. We've now gone to a place where everyone is free to be expressive. We have a very attacking squad. We are attack heavy. And what this manager has done is he's gone, this is how I like to play. So let me make Basuma play in the position that he wants to play. Let me make Lo Celso be the little genius that he is for Argentina in a position that allows him to be that. Let Ndombele fit into that system. So what he's doing is he's giving everyone the confidence to play. Whether or not it all will fit and work once we put all the pieces on the page, he's giving them the confidence. At the back, I agree with you, Ricky. You said that they haven't really been tested. That's absolutely right. And I think in pre-season, we don't really want to see our defence get battered. But what you do want to do is find where you build the confidence. And what our pre-season has done is built the confidence going forward. 
our attacking line is a lot more confident. So that means that there, there potentially will be more goals in our games. Because right now, we are looking like we're going to concede. We're looking like that is exactly what's going to happen. I don't see us winning games 2-3-0 with the team we have. We've got a very young goalkeeper. We also, if you look at the ages of our back four, they're all very, very young. I mentioned this to Ricky earlier. When it comes to leaders and systems, with a very young goalkeeper, with a very young centre-back pairing, which we now potentially will have in Romero and Van, they're very young. So they are going to make mistakes. They are going to look at themselves and go, I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. But what we're doing is we're building a system together. And if we keep this manager, if we work together, there could be a really bright future here. There could be a Tottenham team that one, we enjoy the ride, we enjoy the journey, but then we can all celebrate something together. I think this season, I've taken the pre-season off to really look at Spurs and look at our fan base and look at what's coming. We've got a fantastic, honest manager who has come with a lovely realness about him. He rolls up his sleeves, not literally, but figur figuratively. And he goes, I'm here for a job. I'm here to work. I'm here to be real with you fans. I'm going to be as honest as I can with the players as well as with you. So with that honesty, I think as fans, we've got to be honest with ourselves as well. I don't think we set the bar too high this year. I don't think we over-anticipate wonders before the, the ball's even kicked. It's pre-season and I've heard too many people get too excited about what could be and what can't be. Let's slow it down. Let's, let's slow the train down. Let's take some of the baggage off, some of the weight that we've been carrying for seasons by gone, and let's just go, let's see where this goes. This could be interesting, but it's not all going to happen in one season. But let's enjoy the ride with it. Let's, let's know that it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be rough, but it's going to be a journey that we all have to go together. So I really ask all Spurs fans watching this now, let's stick together. Because this could be our movement right now. This could be a real change of the guards, a real system of... Of, of emotion that builds that we can enjoy. And you said it there, Ricky, the young fans were there today. That's what preseason's about. Young Spurs fans seeing Spurs for the first time in a friendly stadium without the animosity that kicks in during the season when we get grumpy and moody. They saw it looking fresh and pretty in sunshine because there was sunshine today. The sun went gone in Tottenham, have a bit of sunshine. It looked pretty. <laughs> so let's celebrate that. And the season could be a good one, but let's not put pressure on it. Slow down the train. That was brilliant, Dal. But I needed, the, I needed this fucking rising speech at the end of the show, not the beginning of it. Before he's no, just came. No, I know what we're talking about at the end. So I've got, I've got something for the end. Don't worry about that. Thank no, God, it got me tops that goal. What a guy this is, I tell you. Um, guys, guys, that was fantastic. But you forgot to take mute off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got subtitles on this yet? Come yeah, on. we have. We have. It's even been, it's being translated into Korean, Dal. Don't worry about it. They've got, they got a bill. They've got a billboard of you over in Korea. Don't worry, it's coming. Beautiful. Must, it's quite like to hear. I must, I must say, look, I mean, I agree with so much what you say there, Dal. I mean, I've, I've said the point that we've had so many full storms, and you know, it reminded me today that was the first time, of course, that uh, I think since Nuno we had a pre-season friendly under a manager. And it was a really nice touch even when Postacoglu came out. He got a really warm applause from the fans. And look, he's a modest guy, Dale. You said there, he's a real honest, humble man that I still believe for him. This is not to put him down. I don't think he can believe he's got this opportunity maybe at his time of his, of his life, you know, to Absolutely. have the opportunity to manage Tottenham Hotspur. And again, I know, look, there's rival fans that are in here that will banter me for saying that. And I'll say to point again, Tottenham are still a massive, massive football club. And it's just lovely to have someone in charge that actually wants to be there. And I think yeah. you can definitely see that with a man. He didn't sit down, I don't think, once today. He was up on that touchline throughout. I think there was already videos doing uh, the socials where he was so frustrated at one point, which we will come on to with Pierre Mihoybien. It was actually at the one point we stopped playing the Postacoglu way that Spurs conceded, which I'll let you be the judge of what you make of that. But um, after the game, to tie into what Dow said there, he was asked about the size of squad. He said, look, it's fair to say that our squad is too big at the moment and there are guys who want to explore opportunities elsewhere. I'm not involved in that. I think we'll see some movement out in the next coming weeks. Regarding Van der Ven, it's not done yet. I must say it might be done by the time you listen back to this show on your Monday morning commute. He said, we need bolstering in that central defensive area. We need defenders who can work in an aggressive formation, defend well and behind them. We'll be looking to bring in a couple in that area in the coming day. So it doesn't sound like Spurs' business is done in that centre of defence, which is great news. Bearing in mind, Spurs are closing in, of course, on the signing of Mickey van der Ven. And obviously Spurs signing the young Blackburn starlet as well, that we hope look, is going to add to the crux of what Spurs need defensively. He was asked about the system that he deployed in that game today. He said, look, it's hard to say. We've had a disruptive preseason. We had a game cancelled on the other fixture. We had different opposition to what we were expecting. We feel we're probably a little bit 
But today's game probably edges us closer. And of course, we've got Barcelona on Tuesday, so we can probably get more minutes into the guys. The players are working hard, trying to adopt the methodology, and we want to play this way. You can see there's progression there, but there's still a long way to go and players still to come into the squad as well. We have to be integrated into it, so we've got a big amount of work still to be done. He was asked a question. This is not to dive into the Harry subject. He was asked, can it be easy planning right now when you've got the Harry situation around ahead of Brentford in seven days' time? He said, look, I'm just planning and preparing the team for Tuesday and we'll work our way to Brentford next week. I haven't even thought about who will start the game. It's about trying to have as many players ready for that fixture as possible. And we've still got some guys coming in. Of course, signed young Ashley Phillips on Friday. He'll train with the first team. We've hopefully another couple of players coming in over the next couple of days. All those kind of things are part of the planning, and I'll deal with the team for Brentford at the back end of the week. And just to go back to what Ricks, what Dow and Cracks have said in the opening 15, 20 minutes here, it is so refreshing having a manager that literally just answers the question flat, straight, and you don't get any cryptic or any cows crossing roads or any other drama that we have with other managers. It's a straight answer question. He's telling us that we're expecting at least one more in, fingers crossing that defence, which I'm sure will give us all some reassurance. But I think as the boys have said in his opening bit here, Lots to be done. Cautious optimism. I think, as Dow says there, look, we all want to obviously get excited, jump on the train. Um, but at the same time, I think, look, defensively, there's still work to be done. So, fingers crossed, look, we are looking ahead to a really, really bright start under Ange Postacoglu. What we are going to do, we are going to go for our first break of the show for our listeners and audio. There's over 1,500 of you watching us live here. So, can I just say massive, massive thank you for all the incredible support for last one on Spurs. I mean, our views of yeah, it's gone absolutely mental the last couple of years. I do wonder and question whether you're here for the drama or whether you are all genuine Spurs fans. But if you're, as you're here every week, I do believe the pain <laughs> is true. And we're joined by the wonderful Richard Cracknell and the superb Darren Hartman and the brilliant Ricky J. Noor. We're blessing our screens here with lots of love and lots of belief on this last one on Spurs. Guys, we're going to get into the starting lineup. Cracks, I'm going to come over to you. So for this game, Poster Coglu set quite a fairly strong lineup with Hun Min Som, Dian Kiliseski, and Harry Kane. Yes, Harry Kane, captain in the team. Uh, we understand here on last one on Spurs that despite the subject of a final bid from Bayern Munich on Friday, that's believed to be worth £86 million plus add-ons. It is still not clear, as we record here on this Sunday evening, and that may change, of course, if Spurs are prepared to accept that offer for the talisman or walk away for nothing at the end of the season. We will come on to that very, very soon more detail. Mickey van der Ven was in the crowd ahead of the medical, which he's going to have on Monday, which will tie up his move to Wolfsburg. Another arrival when Ashley Phillips signed too late from Blackburn to take part in this game, but he's going to be guaranteed to have that first training session with Postacoglu, ideally on Monday or Tuesday. So at the back there, we had Ben Davis play again alongside Christian Romero. Pierre Hoiberg lined up with Pat Matasar and James Madison. Emerson Royale, he got the nod on the right of that defence with Destiny Adoji on the other flank. There was no space on the bench for Tungi and Dombele, Jed Spence or Joe Roden, among others. So that team always broken down brilliantly by the wonderful Ali Gold. Vicario Emerson, Romero, Davis, Adogi, Hoibia Saar, Madison, Kulisevsky, Kane Son, with a bench of Austin, Gunter, Poro, Sanchez, Dyer, Regulon, Skip, Basuma, the Celso Perisic, Solomon, Scarlett, Cracks team. What did hmm. you make of it? Well, getting more minutes into legs, you can see, begin to see who he's liking, who he likes in certain positions now from this. Um, Kane up top, Kane starting, Kane playing 80 minutes, dominating again, isn't it, the conversation? But he was always going to play today. There was never any doubt he's he's not somebody that's going to be uh, saying, oh, my, it's not in the right place. That's just that's just not him, is it? So I'm surprised that um, the ball didn't have him over at the bricklayers from about 11am buying the boys shots in the bar and... Uh, you know, just trying to trying to make it appear that he is absolutely Tottenham through and through, like you know, in the garden in the, in the garden of the brickies, <laughs> having a having a few Nelson Mandelas with the boys out in the garden. So, uh, um, just on the starting lineup, Rick from the other side, um, Andrei uh, Piatov in goal, thirty nine. He done the first fifteen minutes. Uh, he's been at Shakhtar for 16 years, nearly 450 games, uh, played for Ukraine. He was at Euro 2012 and a good long career. So, And it was nice that they thought what a good place for him to come as a mm. final farewell 
would be London, nearly 60,000 people in that in that stadium. So it just shows you the appeal that Spurs have got, London's got, and that stadium has got. I know there's it, the issues with it isn't in a stadium, is it an entertainment centre, la, la, la. But, you know, that was a nice, nice way to bail out nearly 450 games for him for like for you know, an opposition keeper. So uh, yeah, it was you know you know I'm in the keepers union. Right, so so crack just on nice that very quickly because I want to ask you a question on that as well. Could, could Spurs mm. not have done the same for Hugo Lloris? I, I just wonder when I looked at that today and the way in which he was given that mm. almost farewell there. Hugo has not had that opportunity to even say goodbye to the fans. And he's, still the, well, and he's still at the football club. Exactly. So if it all falls through and you do that and he doesn't get the move and he stays at the club and uh, is he still in contract, Rick? Yeah. Is, or he's is still he got a year left. He, still 12 months to go. Yeah, he's 12 still got months. a year left. So he could have got that and then ended up like being on the bench for a year if he doesn't get his move. So it's a tough one. I mean, because like, Piatov's finished now, um, done and dusted. So... I don't know. Maybe if uh, if Lloris had actually got his move and gone, then they may well have done something something like that. So uh, it's it's nice to see, isn't it? When, when you get players like that, you know, and when when they go, if you can give them some sort of you know a, a farewell as such. So, uh, but yeah, a, a good starting lineup. Um, yeah. He's, I mean, Hoybier, we don't know what's going to be happening with him, do we? There's, there's no. talk of him going. Um, Saar in the, in the middle now. Wow. I, I really... And Udoji as well. Two real, real standout stars of the future. Um, they'll get tested. They'll. We're going to have games this season where they're going to have their derriers handed to them on a plate by some experienced players and, and teams. And... Um, but you know, as as Darren said, when when we go through those moments, um, we got we got to stick with this. So, uh, when as soon as Ange came, I said that we're going to have some weeks where we get some idings and we land out some idings. So it will be up and down. But we have got to we've got to hang our hat on this, Rick. We've yeah. <laughs> we've had four or five seasons of. Of ups and downs, and um, Mourinho coming and bought some players, and then Conte's coming and bought some players, and we've still got some Pochettino players. So we've got this real mishmash. So there's there's lots to unpick. Bring in, bring through some players, bring in some youngsters. I'm I'm never one to be too upset if you're trying to bring some real rising stars through like you doggy like Saar, um like spence if he does get a chance and if you get a couple of wallopings whilst they're learning then you have to you have to go you have to go with it you have to you have to stick yeah. with it if you can see the direction of travel's good the odd flat tire shouldn't really derail the whole mission no. and journey should it so yeah. uh Madison in the middle. Well, uh, again, <laughs> there's your lock picker, Rick. I mean, it's something yeah, I mean, that, got, <laughs> that we so, spoke about. It's so enjoyable today, Crack, seeing a player that actually drives forward yeah. the ball, looks yeah. to create. I mean, it's mad to think the last player we had was Christian Eriksen, and we're going back, what, three, four years ago now. So mm. I've got to say, it was it was really, really enjoyable, Cracks, to see a player on the front foot, I'm sure you agree, that well, actually is looking to score goals and looking to create goals as well. Got some feet on him, that boy, and he oh. he really does. You know, he, he dances his way twinkle through. Twinkle toes, twinkle toes yeah. at times. Yeah, Sonny quiet today. Um, mm. You know, but then he's only just back from uh, yeah. an operation and everything. So I know a lot of people, even in the comments, are saying, "Oh, nothing again from Son today." You don't know how long his recovery is going to be. I mean, fit enough to play, but maybe just feeling it a bit. But he's not up to full. For also, you know, I won't worry about Sonny. People saying, "Oh, I think he's done." He's not. He's far from done. He he really is. He's a fantastic, fabulous yep. player. Once he gets back up and running, but yeah, nice, nice, a, a nice team. Nice. It's it's interesting. I like this team, but the second half teams throughout this whole preseason have just looked that little bit. More yeah. about them, haven't I've got, they? I've got, I've got to say, Solomon and the Celso's introduction, we'll come on to a bit later on. I mm. thought both of them really have given Ange some headaches in a positive way because they played ever so well when they come on. And I think really they're going to be, yeah, chomping at the bit. 
it will be interesting to see, of course, that team that does go against Barcelona on Tuesday in terms of just how many changes we're going to make. Rick, if I ask you the question there, well, this 11 we've named today, when you look at that team there, how many would you say of those players are likely to start against Brentford, which is a week today? Because clearly Postacoglu has changed it up. We pretty much saw kind of a, a firmerish 11 today that what we have seen during preseason. There's been no more of these 45 minute segments of players. If I was to ask you now, out of the team that started for Shatter Donetsk, how many of them are in your starting lineup for Brentford next week? Well, I, I mean, I don't know how many is in it from for, 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 for my starting 11, but what I would say about this starting 11 and comparing it to what's going to happen against Brentford, I, I think what's really telling is Davies, Hoiberg, and Saar right now. So for me, putting Davies in for, I think, the third time, I know he, I think he was on the team sheet for Leicester, but, um, but it's the third time he's been put in at left centre back. I think that's very, very telling. Um, you know, um, not just for him, but for the other defenders behind him. For Roden, for Sanchez, for Dyer, for Tanganga. If Davies is starting that left centre back role, I think that's very kind of telling from an Ange point of view that he's looking at Davies and going, okay, cool. Can you do a job here for for me? And and what can you bring to the team at left centre back when there's only two in the back line, two centre backs? So um, I think it, it definitely showed us that we are looking for defenders. And I think that we're going to look totally different with Mickey or a, an, an additional new defender in there. Um, also with the Hoiberg and Saar, you know, Saar's not managed to get that many minutes. So for him to start, I think he's impressed enough that Ange wanted to see him start and see what he could do for, you know, a, a, a good period of time. How long was he on for? I think like 60, 70 minutes, I think, before yeah. he came off. Yep, so, right. um, yeah, I think it was it, it was a good kind of period of time for Ange to actually get to know what Saar's about and what he can bring to the side. Hoiberg as well, there's been speculation that he's, um, you know, uh, potentially going. But also there's been that kind of talk that he ain't an Ange signing or he can't fit this particular system. And I think t- today was a test for him, you know. So I think that's what Ange has been doing with this particular side. And, and um you know, like when it comes down to Brentford next week, I would personally, I, I would hope that Mickey starts. But, you know, after having a, a, a week, firstly, he hasn't signed yet. Firstly, I've got to catch myself because he hasn't signed yet. He hasn't held the shirt yet. But, um, you know, I would hope that he would get a start and kind of go chuck him in. Let's, you know, let, let's learn on the job almost. Do you know what I mean? But he would only have like a week's worth of training in there. And then we know how good Basuma has been in that midfield. So what I think is really interesting about that midfield that we just saw there is that that is almost, in in a way, a defensive midfield. So you've got the two hold, I say defensive lot, Hoiberg and Saar. But even though Saar can go box to box, but you've got Hoiberg and Saar playing the defensive and then you've got Madison being able to be free to do what you've done today. And he just keeps growing in stature. He keeps growing in confidence. And, and we're seeing you know, why we brought him in and what we've been missing for so many seasons, you know, in Madison. But it also, when we want to switch it, we can go Basuma, be one defensive uh, midfielder and potentially defensive midfielder. And then you go Madison and Lascelso as an attacking lot. Do you know what I mean? So I think what it's showing us today is that we do have options. And we have options to change the system and to be fluid with it. That was another thing that I was really impressed by, uh, by the team that went out today. In both halves, how fluid they were in possession, how fluid they were in formation, you know, in transition. They looked all over the park. You know, they, we totally dominated the uh, Shakhtar today. And um, it was, of course, it's the, the skill and the, and the technicalities of these players that we do have right now. But it was also the way in which Ange has wanted us to play football. So that's what's really excited me now, you know? Um, you, you Doji, I would start him. I, he would be my left back for me. I think he's young enough. I think he's big enough. I think he's strong enough. Uh, he's quick say, enough. Ritz, come back on this. I've got to say that being next, I was, I was in row 10 today at the East Stand. Literally, he is a colossus. He's massive. He's huge. He's honestly, he, honestly he's, he's built for the Premier League. He really, yeah. really is. You know, for me now, I look at someone like Sesson Young. I don't know how he's going to get back in. I'll be honest with you. And look, again, that's not me judging Nadogi over three preseason games, but I'm just saying that when you look at the sheer physicality of Adogi, if he can adapt to the Premier League, I think there's no going back now. He looks really formidable. And again, one that I'm sure Rick's massively excited about, right? 
Absolutely, bro. But I think that's a sign of, of, of what you just said there. You know, yes, different managers, but look how long Seth has been about and look how unlucky he's been with injuries and getting in the side. And then once he's in the side, he's out the side and, and then another injury turns up. But you've seen your doggy for what? You know, a couple of games, let's say five minutes to, to you know, uh, to, as, a, as an expression. And you're convinced and you can see it. Do you know what I mean? He hasn't done it yet. He, he ain't the player that we want him to be yet, but you're convinced. And I'm convinced when I see him. When I see him going up, that, like charging up that field, when I see him kind of just being that big, strong stature of a defender, as well as an attacker, I'm like, there is something special going to come from him. And with this inverted uh, fullback system that Ange's playing, I think there's so much to come from him. I don't know whether you saw him, any of him last season playing for um, Udinese, but... He loved marauding forward. He loved being in the middle of the park. He would be in the middle of the park. Like, he, he would travel, but he'd be in midfield. And then he'd be up front. Then he'd be on the wing. Then he'd be in the box. And I think there's so much to come from him. And I think he's going to really kind of help that left side. You know, today, having Emerson on one side, the defensive one, and having you, the, you doggy on the other side, the attacking one, we, we, it, it looked good. It looked good. The only thing that was a bit shaky was the goal that we conceded, which was in between Davies and Udogi. And they haven't, they didn't work that bit out on the cross. But that's where a new defender can come in and change things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm really encouraged. You know, there's a lot, there's, there's a couple of players there that we've seen year in, year out. But a lot of them look different. And those that are on the out list, it's almost rightly so that they're on that out list. Do you know what I mean? So I think there's a, there's a freshness about this side you know, uh, that I'm excited to see. Yeah, it is. When you consider there, obviously, of course, Regulon, Spence, not getting minutes quite interestingly. Perotic as well on the bench today. You know, it'll be interesting to see, of course, as we referenced, that Barcelona game, which is on Tuesday, not too long away, how Spurs do adopt that game in terms of whether they're going to give some of the fringe players an opportunity to maybe change Angel's mind ahead, of course, of Brentford at the weekend. Dow, coming over to you. Um, look, Spurs did start very, very well. As I said, it was lovely to see a high press from Tottenham. Flurry of chances. Kulisewski testing the goalkeeper. Kane actually, um, yeah, his first shot inside a minute. And I think there's no doubt, we'll come on to Kane shortly, that this system is going to really see a lot of opportunities for Harry Kane. Got a massive cheer from the crowd to start with. They were singing his name. And look, I've got to say, it was great to see. And it was Harry Kane, of course, Dow. It would be Harry Kane that would open the scoring of this one. Massive cheer from the crowd as he tucked the spot kit home. Must say, Madison was obviously the man that was brought down for the penalty. And already down in those opening stages, you could see the way Madison was affecting the game, getting on the ball, taking it to the opposition. As I've said, it's been lovely and refreshing to see a player that drives at the opposition. And it came from him that Spurs did get that opening goal. Harry Kane from the spot, no doubt about it. Now, was it almost written today to be the Harry Kane show to some degree? Yeah, it was. It, it was the universe sending out a message to, to all of us to kind of go, this is what we have, this is what he does. And yeah, it, 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 was, it was a big statement for him and it was a big performance from him. And I think taking in a lot of consideration of what everyone has said about the starting lineup and the way in which we're playing, Cratch, you said about the headaches that our second half team will provide for our manager. And I think that's really good to see because many a time we've spoke about our bench and looking at it as optionless and going, we don't really trust what's there, and the manager doesn't clearly trust what's there. And I think what we're building now is a system that everyone plays a part in. Everyone can see what they can implement and how they can produce something on the pitch. And the manager's testing out his tools right now, and it's good to see that he's he's toying with them to go, which one is right for me? Which one's going to work? He's going to make he's gonna make a mistake. Let's not forget that. He's going to play Royale in a game and he's going to have a mare and we're going to go, he played the wrong one. He's going to learn and we've got to go with that. And today we saw moments with Madison and Kane, which is going to be an interesting dynamic to see because sometimes the traffic was on top of each other with Madison and Kane. And I think they've got to work that out with each other as well to go, who, who's occupying that space at what time? And it's going to be good to see that transition between the two of them because uh, Richarlison offers a different option if he plays because he's not going to want to be where Madison is. He's going to go, I'm running, go find me. And Madison will go, I know you're there, so I'm going to find you. And the out ball can be quicker. And there are different options that this side presents. And I think it was good today to see Madison seeing moments when he could go beyond Kane and go, OK, if Kane's here and he's next to me, I don't need to be here, I'll go beyond. And I think this team is learning from each other. And that is what preseason is all about. It's about that learning of how we all play, how the manager wants us to play and making mistakes. And I know people have spoke about Saar, how amazing he was today and the box-to-box -box nature or the defensive nature. 
when he's playing, he's going to need support. There are going to be games where he's going to need the, the big man hand on the shoulder to go, I've got you. And right now, it, for me, it's Basuma. You're looking at someone like that to lead him or Hoiberg to go, I've got you. So I know a lot of people want Hoiberg out, that he may not be an Ange player. But I think maybe we still need a governor in there. And not as in, oh, I am ultimate leader, but a voice. Someone who is talking these young ones through because this team is getting a lot younger if you look at the players we're buying. The, the, the natural age of this squad, yes, Barkane yeah. and Son, is yes. really coming down. That's yeah. a beautiful thing because that's longevity. But that does also mean growth. People need that learning experience. And I think today, today Madison Kane showed up. I know people are talking about Son not being on it yet. It's pre-season. I don't want him to be firing now. I want him to fire at the business then. And let's hope that all comes. Dale, to stick with you, because I've got to ask your verdict on it. You're so positive. There was one moment during that first half where, of course, Spurs go one up. And then Postecoglou turns his back in disgust as Pierre-Emil Hoybier hoofs the ball away. Now, I haven't seen Christian Romero cut out the cross. Royal touched the ball down to him. And like I say, Hoybier did clear out his lines, but... Postacog looks so frustrated on the touchline for a man that wants to play this free-flowing football. It was almost a hoof from Hoybier. We're going to come to crack shortly. It will tell us about how that goal obviously came about and what led to that rest of the move. But is it fair to say, Dale, it's going to take a bit of time, as you said. It's not going to all happen overnight. You probably want these things to happen in pre-season. How important is it that we stick to the manager's philosophy? And maybe it happens now rather than, of course, in a week's time when the real game does start in terms of Brentford? I think it's going to be imperative. It's going to be, it's going to be gold to the character of these players. I actually was speaking to Ricky about this, about how the, I, I presume the way they train. And I think Andy's one of those managers that, as plays going, blows stop. Look what you did there. Why are you there? Why? Look at the picture that you have on the pitch now. Think about the choice you're making. And he will, he will try and embed the system. Because our, our players... For me, and this is just my opinion, have been stifled by systems that didn't fit their natural game. And I think now it's relearning because when you're trained to go, I've got to do it this way, that becomes a pressure and and a focus. So Hoiberg went into the default mode. I've got the ball, I just hoof it. Get it out, we reshape, we get everyone behind the ball and we go again. But what's happening now is he's being told, that's not what we do. So probably by the time he got to the dressing room, he was like, what were you doing in that minute? Why did you do that? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Gaffer. I know, I know, I know. It's going to take time for that to come out of my system. But if you're willing to let that out of your system, we're going to see a better Tottenham. Because like that press, as Ricky spoke about earlier, we did look like we had an extra man. The bodies were working hard because... If we don't work hard in our press, we're always going to be exposed. I can see the out ball that every side is going to look at when they play against Spurs. They're going to look for that diagonal ball to either isolate um, Royal or Yudoji, who's already gone high up the pitch, to go, that's the ball. And if we're playing Davis right now, it's going to be his side. They're going to try and go that side because he's not the quickest. And that's we've, we've got to be aware of that. And I think that's where all the learning is going to come. And that's why it's going to be a process. But the gaffer, I think, right now, his temperament is great for everybody because we saw that he was annoyed by that. He didn't hide it. That's great. So then he can address it publicly and privately and we can move on. Yeah, but you I know mean, what? Also, also, I mean, also on Hoiberg, right? He's been, you know, when we first brought him in, we, before we brought him in, we had no midfield, right? We were getting overrun in midfield. Yep, it was like, yep. uh, my fr- you know, my friend Expression says it was like a pack of polos. Was, there was just a hole in the middle, right? Do you know what I mean? You could get through it so easy. When Hoiberg came in, he was the one midfielder that we ran into the ground. He'd done everything. He covered left side. He covered right side. He covered middle, right? And then he was the general. And then he's the Viking. And he's, he's been this guy for so long that when a new manager's come in, yeah. When new managers come in and ask him to do something different, it's it's for him especially because he's a leader as well. It, it just messed him up a little bit, and maybe that's where that talk comes that Hoiberg can't fit the Ange system. Now, personally, I think that Hoiberg's intelligent enough to, if like Darren just said there, if if you know he can jump on the training training pitch and kind of recognize where the manager doesn't want him to play and recognize the new wrongs. Yeah, because under Conte and under Mourinho and under Nuno, hoofing that ball was the right thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, doing that was the right thing to do. But under Ange, this is the wrong thing to do. So having that switch for Hoiberg, that's, that's going to be the next dilemma. That's going to be the next hurdle to jump over for him. But I think he's more than capable of doing it. But th- this is where it comes from. Is he prepared to do it? Or 
does he want to go to another defensive side in Atletico Madrid who play that ball where hoofing the ball is the right thing to do? That's the dilemma right there with him. It's a great point you make there, Rick. So I think it was really interesting, Cracks, coming over you that actually started today because, again, I think the one thing I was saying to my brothers at the time I was next to today is that he's been a favourite every manager that's been here. It was, of course, under Jose who bought him, then under Nuno, then under Conte. So I wasn't massively surprised, if I'm being honest with you, that Ange did start him. He has got a really good attitude. He's an hmm. ultra-professional guy. Um, I think he does care deeply about the football club. But I have to also say what Rick said there. I think we have also overplayed him, as we've done with a lot of players over the years, and therefore we've weighed him down, and therefore we've not always seen the best of him. And I think, again, uh, Adrian very kindly puts on the screen here with Hoybier. Um, He puts Hoybier 35 games, five assists, four goals, 88.6 passing actually last season. I think it depends what you want Spurs to be this season, whether Hoybier mm. can adapt to that. But there's no doubt about it that Postacoglu looked very, very frustrated on the touchline with that clearance and could be seen leaning back before touching his knees, just saying, play the ball, play the ball. And I think that's the one thing you can see, Cracks. That's not how he wants Spurs to play. It was extremely telling that we didn't see it happen again. And especially the fact that it resulted in Shaq Dar's goal seconds later when they stopped playing the Postacoglu way. The ball being built up field resulted in uh, Kevin Kelsey getting above Ben Davis to head pass for Cario. And I will make this point that maybe, look, next Sunday, Mickey van der Ven might be in there, who is arguably known for being a real good aerial defender. Again, going to take him time to adapt to the Premier League. And that's been my biggest frustration in this window, that we all know cracks, Spurs have needed centre-backs. It's the one area, the glaring mm. area, from the back end of last season where we had 63 goals conceded. And we've we've left that area the last to be resolved. We're going to come on to Kane shortly, but for Vicario, who's a new goalkeeper, new league, new system, new players, I feel it's unfair on him. And then you're trying at the same time as I think Cracks you alluded to in the opening there, you're then going to have to try and then work on a new partnership in the start of a season. Mm. You know, they've had no prison together. I mean, what's your thoughts on the way Spurs conceded that goal? And are you concerned naturally by the goals that we have conceded during this preseason? Well, when Hoybier made that mistake and um, and Postacoglu <laughs> made it quite publicly known how he was feeling about it, I should think he probably got into the dressing room and went full Alf Stewart from home and away <laughs> on him, didn't he? I bet he's flung that door off its hinges, splintered off its hinges. You flaming galah! He's giving it a big one of that, isn't he? <laughs> he's probably gone in on him, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now look, you flaming galah, <laughs> rack off. <laughs> he's, prob- he's probably gone on one, isn't he? He's proper Alf Stewart in him. He wants to him. But, uh, <laughs> but look, Hoybier, uh, I, I like him. I can see his shortcomings. I mean, there's a, there's a, lot, there's a lot of industry in his work rate, but not a lot of craft. I, I mean, I called him the dustman. That's that's what I, I, I christened him uh, a while ago. I think that maybe Ange now needs more of a recycling expert or something there, you know, a recycling man rather than a dustman. So I think he's maybe not refined enough for him, maybe not transition transitions quick enough. You know, he turns very slowly and you just can't do that with with Angie's style of football. So, um, you know, if he goes Atletico, that suits his style of play more, I think. So that's something that that does need looking at. If he doesn't go, I wouldn't be upset, but I think somebody needs to be in, in front of him and then he can he can like come on. 70 80 minutes or something if it needs shoring up etc cetera, etc cetera. it's it's interesting with these two teams and getting a lot of minutes into legs don't forget we're going to be seeing a lot of 100 105 minute games this season so if you're looking at what could be 15 minutes added time in games every six games that's another half of a of a game that they're playing another half does that mean so, four-hour episodes are last one on Spurs then? <laughs> <laughs> you go extra time with, with this. <laughs> Honestly, well, anybody going to the game and then being on the show afterwards, you're going to get my 
you're going to get my infamous trying to do the show on a train episode <laughs> once, didn't I? Where I done a show on the train we'll, back we'll from start, Lane. We'll have to start for the 70th minute and then we'll finish by 8 o'clock. <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah. We just have to start the review at half time and sort of pick it up in real time, wouldn't we? It's we we, we do that anyway with a press so conference. So why not? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we'll Go never see Jay, Jace again. We'll never Can see imagine? Jace again. He won't come back, bro. There'll we'll be, be like, loads oh, of these, wouldn't there? The cricket's <laughs> on. The underwater soot juggling from as a by John's on. <laughs> just, but, just on, just on a hoi bit, cracks for you. For you coming to end this window, I don't know where I am now with this bloody show already. We're, only, we're nearly an hour, an hour in. I feel we've done four hours. Uh, cracks, tell me, is it? Will he be a Spurs player coming in the window? Hoi uh, Rick, uh, who who knows? Who really knows? It's like, w- did you ever think Rafa van der Vaart would be a Spurs player at half past ten, <laughs> coming up to the eleven o'clock deadline? On, on on deadline day, you know, things can happen. The right bid comes in, the right offer comes in, he goes, he he may stay. You just, you, you don't know. I don't know if Kane's starting next week at Brentford or whether he's going to have yeah. his leather laid hosing on and drinking a, nope. a, a stein about eight foot tall. Yeah. I, you, 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 don't, you don't know, you know. He might be jumping up and down to an umpire band or he might be on the bus back from, from West London. Who knows? You just you you cannot know. But look, if he's in the squad, I won't be unhappy. I won't be unhappy if he goes either. I like his industry. There's something about him I do like. He has his deficiencies, but yeah, I mean it was it was a terrible slip. We we slipped out of Ange ball, didn't we? And got absolutely punished for it. So yeah. uh but if we can get the deficiencies at the back sorted, they may be able to deal with these mistakes that, that, that do do crop, crop up. So, I mean, the new lad sat in the stands today. He is only a youngster, by the way. I mean, he's yeah. he's a decent player, but he is another youngster that's going to have to, have yeah. to bed in. So, um, let, let's see, Rick. It's it, football's always silly season, isn't it? Even this, like even this show. Sometimes you don't know if any of us are transferring out, do you? <laughs> to, to be honest, with with four hour shows, we might have to oh, start we might have, yeah, we might have to, we might have to like the multi but yeah, we yeah. might have to the roll on roll off system or the multiple yeah. system. God, Jesus right, Christ! I've got, I got to go. Lee McQueen taking over. All right, guys. <laughs> That's not a Rex anyway, to be honest with you, Rex. I tell you, the way I'm transferring, getting the kids from the car, we might as well go that way. Um, I will add the point, you know, I just, you know what, in my head now, I've got that bloody thing, Richard said, that flaming color, and it's coming back at me every five seconds. I just can't move on from it. I just can't move on. Um, a quick yes or no from the boys. Uh, Rix, Hoybier, Spurs player coming in the window or not for you? Uh, oh, it's tough for me to say yes or no, bro. I mean, and we I'm, know I'm, 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 I know, you know, you know. You, you, you put me into a corner. It never happens. I'm going to go on for five minutes now. No, I I love and agree exactly what Crackers are saying there. I, I do have a lot of love for Hoiberg. I think there's a lot about him that I do really enjoy. But if we were to get rid of him, then we, we have to get an upgrade. And and I would have felt that Kessie would have been a great one to get for 15 mil. Of, you know, he, he wants to go and get that Saudi money. Saudi right, money. Fine, you know, yeah. you know, M- M- Milenkovic Savic, I, I'm really upset that he'd gone Saudi as well. Saudi well, money. He's, he's, he's proud. <laughs> so, so, what's the theme here, Dad? What's the theme? It's, Saudi <laughs> money. <laughs> When is it coming our way? When is it coming to Bro, Tottenham? Bro, we, we, we need to get out of here. The, we haven't got the, it, the players, it. man. We haven't got the players for it. I'm telling you, we Never haven't. mind Saudi money. I'm still waiting to do some furniture adverts or some betting adverts with Harry Redknapp. I'll be happy with that. <laughs> Never mind Saudi money, Mr. Hartman. I'll be in the call for you, Cracks. I'll be in the call. Now, I'll be coming to you. But, Did we get a yes or no, Rick? Sorry. Go for it. Sorry, yeah, Rick. Yeah, no, I, no I, I, I agree. I agree with uh, uh, with Crackers there, man. It's like, you know, if he goes, all right, and fine. Thank yeah. you very much. But if he stays, I'm not going to be upset either. So that's where I am. I can't give you a yes or no. Sorry. Dallas, Dallas coming to you, bro. Any ideas at this stage? What do you reckon? Yes or no? Hoy BS did a Spurs player come in in the window? Yes, I think he will be in my heart. But if you ask okay. me from a Spurs perspective, no, I think it will ship him up. Okay, I mean, interestingly, Postecoglou admitted he was not happy at the end of that first half and he kept the players in for longer to make it very, very clear that, look, he did say it's not a reflection on the players, it's just where we're at. I think we're doing a lot of things where it's because I'm telling them to do it rather than belief. I really wasn't happy with that last five or six minutes of the first half. And this is what I absolutely love about this next line. We were just playing for 1-0. That doesn't sit well with me. 
I don't blame the players because they're going at that moment through my guidance, but it shows me we still have a lot of work to do in terms of getting them to really believe and be the team we want them to be, which is not unexpected. We've been working together four to five weeks. So when I see things like that, it's a good sort of reminder that this is a fair way to go. How refreshing is it, Kai, just as we come to the hour mark here, that the manager going into half time at 1 0 doesn't want us to accept 1 0, go and score more. God, isn't that refreshing from what we've been used to? And um, we are going to go for our next break of the show for our listeners and audio. There's over 17 to 1800 of you watching us live. Thank you so much again for all your incredible support for Last Word on Spurs. We're joined by British finest two actors in a wonderful Ricky J. Norton, superb Darren Hartman. And look, he's the legendary, the superb compare, world's entertainment legendary host, Richard Cracknell's in the house here as we take you through Spurs' pre-season and what's to come. Yes, the big Harry Kane conversation is coming. We don't want it to derail the show too much. We're coming across to it very, very shortly. We're an hour in here and we are going to discuss that second half where, to be fair, the game does come into that commotion about Harry Kane. And if I can come round to Dow, um, Dow, to start that second half, Spurs did come out the traps. Madison picking out Kane with a beautiful cross towards the six-yard box. The skipper heading it home. And look, I think that's what everything we want to see about Madison. Just before that, a lovely double drag back as well, drawing the roars of appreciation from the crowd. And I said, look at Madison's performance, 77 minutes played, one assist, six key passes, two big chances created, a penalty one. Can we ask any more from Madison on okay, his opening game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Dale? Not at all. That's, that's everything we have been asking for, screaming for, needed. Mr. Satch, you've been screaming for it for, for eternity. The lock picker, the guy in that, in that little pocket of space to, to allow Spurs to be the Spurs that we know they can be. And it was, yeah, glorious performance from Madison. And if he continued in his vein, he will get better. He will continue to flourish in that position. I think the beautiful thing about the squad we currently have, he has competition. There is also a Lesselso there who is looking at this system going, I like this system. I can play in this. This, this, this is Argentina for me. Someone made a point about Hoiberg at Denmark in the comments. And I think the Spurs squad has been that universally for a while. Players that we've got haven't looked great in our side, but go internationally and look phenomenal. Hoiberg, Richarlison, Lo Celso, Romero at times. Like, they go away, even like Ben Davis, even Roden, for crying out loud. They leave us, they go on international duty, and my only connection with why they look better there than they have at Spurs is confidence and playing in a system that they know and they like to play in. And suddenly, we're doing both in our club confidence and a system that they like to play in and they, they know. And I think it can only bring good fortune. If you watch every goal celebration, look at the joy of the team. And it wasn't that, oh, look how amazing we are and big celebrations and we're the best thing since sliced bread. It's that, it's good, isn't it? This is working. Nice. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw you. I saw it. Yes, we're doing it. It's that. That's what you want to see in pre-season. It's starting to click. And that's what Madison is bringing. I'm loving it. Yeah, I've got to agree. Just on sticking on Madison, Rick's come over to you. You know, he finishes the match, two smart assists, winning a penalty, some really lovely quick feet. And we make that point, how Spurs have missed a player like him, you know, that can unlock a defence, create a chance from nothing. You know, we've not had someone like that since Christian Eriksen, which was back in January 2020. Here we are now, what, two and a half years, nearly three years on. And whether he's predominantly playing behind Kane, Richarlison or somebody else, it does feel like that this particular player could be part of a real Postacoglu revolution. And must I just say as well, Rick, I'm sure you agree, he looks absolutely lovely in that Spurs shirt, doesn't he? Uh, it, it looks like it was made for him. It looks like yeah. it was made for him. And you yeah. know what? Ever since medicine's come in, everything that he's said, everything that he's done, on, on the little kind of videos, you know, outside of the game that we've been getting on YouTube or on Spurs player, or every, anything like that, the little, the little interviews with Milesy and stuff, you can see, there's a banter about him. There's there's an enjoyment about him. When he brought his son into the Spurs shop to pick out his, his you know his little baby Spurs kit, I'm like he is really embracing the the Spurs fans, the stadium, and the Tottenham way. Do you know what I mean? And he knows he knows from that conversation with Ange that, <clears throat> you know, he said it himself. He he out of all the options that he had, he could visualize playing for Tottenham. He could visualize playing in that white top. He could visualise creating and, and, and getting that crowd off, off their feet. And, you know, the more he hears that crowd roar when he does something like that, like the double drag back or the little flick or 
the, the more he hears that crowd roar, the more we're going to see from him. The more that he plays, uh, especially at White Art Lane, and I'm calling it White Art Lane, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but the, the more he plays at home, the more he's going to like kind of have the affinity with the fans and the fans are going to have that affinity with him. And the, the, the moment that he hears it, especially in, in that stadium, He's going to want to do more. He's going to want to express himself more. He's going to want to have the set piece. He's going to want to have the goal. He's going to want to, he's going to, want to do all of these things. So, you know, for years and years and years and years, you know, for, for, for a while now, like you've said, like a lot of us have said, we've needed that creative player, but we haven't had a creative manager that, that would allow a creative player to go out there and do the job. Do you know what I mean? That feels free to go and do that job and just to kind of bounce on to what Darren was saying there about um, players going away into internationals and playing better you're talking about confidence and um, you said Tyke Hell style what did you say confidence systems else. and this system S- s- systems but do you know what else it's conflict Mourinho and Conte and Nuno they they create conflict and if we look back at the example that we've had this season, especially Richarlison, do you know what I mean? Like that tiff that he had with Conte. And if you hear the outpouring, and I'm sure a lot of the fans have heard it, where he kind of sat him down for two hours and berated him for those whole two hours in front of the whole squad. Now, that's not going to encourage freedom. It's not going to encourage insp- expression. It's not going to encourage confidence. And it's not going to have any want. You're not going to want no. to go out there and do it. Not for a man like that that has just told you, you know, uh, you know how rubbish your socks are and, and you know, how, how, you know, I don't know, your, your hairstyle is going left when it should be right. It, you, you're not going to go out there and perform for a guy like that. And this is what Ange has brought right now. This is what he's bringing. He, he's, 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 he's being a, like a true kind of, man to man with him as well as him being a manager and as well as him being an authoritative figure he's being a man about him do you know what i mean and going look a bit like harry redknapp would do you know what i mean like go on son go and play you know what we need to do go and play you know and i think that's what's really encouraging as well with not just madison but with a lot of them with a lot of them like look at kulu today kulu little bit by little bit in the preseason, we've saw it, saw, seen him start slowly, but he's just clicking into gear at the minute. You can mm. see him getting quicker. You can see him getting a bit more trickier. And you can see him wanting to work in the Ange Postacoglu way. And the fact that he hasn't yet, the fact that it hasn't clicked for him yet, he's going to push, 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 and push. I've got a feeling he'll score against Brentford, mate, honestly, because we're, we're looking like a different side altogether. So, yes, yeah. without that conflict there from... Con- from managers that kind of thrive off of conflict as well. They like to give it to the player and then go, all right, cool, I'll prove you wrong, Mourinho. I'll prove you wrong, Conte. Well, Ange doesn't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, go out there and play. Or if you don't want it, then cool, you can leave. It's fine. But just being a like a, a true kind of... The way, same way he's been straight in the press conferences, same way he's been straight in an interview, he's been straight with those players. And those players are going to appreciate it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you give us the truth, we can appreciate it, even if it's a hard truth, even if it's, if it's something that we don't want to hear. If you give us the truth, then at least we know where we are, where we stand and where we can go from this point forward. And that's what Andrew's doing, which is really exciting. Yeah, I've got to say, Rich, well, kind of you cracks. It, again, it's refreshing because I think, again, not just saying this from being there, but that it did feel the players were a lot more relaxed and there was a freedom to being able to express themselves in how they played. And again, look, it's pre-season in the context of a meaningless game, we're going to really see next week in terms of Brentford how those players approach it. And I think the one thing that everybody's saying at the moment is it is a process, Cracks. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. It's all going to happen overnight. That's both defensive-wise, attacking-wise, getting the message through to those players. But Madison's a player that I feel is going to give Spurs a lot of joy to come in the course this season, the coming ones. Um, Our Harry Kane hat-trick, of course. Hoybier to be fair to him. him. I'm coming through on somewhere. I'm coming through double, double on somewhere. We're all good. I think we're all good. Um, Greg's coming over to you there. Uh, to be fair to him, Harry Kane got his hat trick. Hoy Pierre intercepted the clearance. Son playing in Kuliseski, took a nutmeg. And the Spurs fans are singing, Harry Kane, we want you to stay. We're going to come on to Harry in literally five. But before we do, um, Crackers, Christian Romero, new manager, new season. Same old Christian Romero. He went clattering in to a Shakhtar player. Now, I'd love to know whether you think, Cracks, that we don't want to take that out of him because that is Christian Romero. And mm. if you lose that devilman, and look, I'm not saying to go out there and cause an injury, 
But what I'm saying is that you've got to have that devilment the same way Delhi had that devilment at Tottenham. Do you think the same way with Christian Romero, we can't afford to lose that spark that he's got there? Because that's what makes him the player he is. Because I've got to say, a couple of times, he had some wonderful time tackles during that game. Yeah, it's but he, he needs to learn to control it, doesn't he? It's all about what what he does with that that fire in his belly. It's always it's the Ronaldo effect. When he first came to the Premier League and Man United, it was show pony step overs, this that, everything else, and he wasn't that effective. But he he grew and he molded and he and he shaped it and he sort he kept that. But he channeled it in a different way. So it's it's now all about the manager and the coaching team. Don't forget, coaching teams around a manager as well. They have to be right. They probably work with these players more than a manager does. You know, so people like Ledley King, even, if he comes back into the fold. I mean, there's a lad that knows how to channel a calmness, but an assertiveness into his game, you know, and channel it in, in the right way. So it, yeah, it's, it, it's a, it's a tough one. He's got that real South American firebrand way of playing, hasn't he? And if you, if you take it away, you could lose something. But as I said, if you can channel it, then, then fan, fantastic. It's uh, again, maybe this is why, uh, and just said we're looking to bring a couple in at the back this week because we could lose Romero for a couple of games here and now um, with suspensions and red cards. It, it will happen. So everything now just feels like a bit of a process we need to go through. It's not going to happen overnight. I see in the comments we haven't been tested yet and people are right to still be cautious. I'm still cautious because... Will these players play with the, the, the freedom and the way they're currently playing? If we've had a couple of really bad results and been walloped for a couple of weeks, will they retreat into their shell? I can't see Ange changing his philosophy. I think he will still be at these players to play in that, that way and he'll live or die you know, on that hill of it. But... It's another thing being a player that's been walloped to, for a couple of weeks running or a squad of t players, a team of players, and still want to play with that expression and that freedom and the way Romero plays and the way Madison plays. So, you know, it will be a, a good couple of seasons before this all really starts to click into place. But like, like we've pointed out, we're going to have to stick with this, when we do go through these rough patches and these rough results, yeah, it's what it's what as a comment just come up on the screen when I was listening on audio, they they've swapped swap sides, Ricky and and Hartman look like they're in in the same room and just if you're, swap not, sides. If you're not watching yeah. this, which I know, mate, but we've got, we've got a lot of love on audio. <laughs> this is the funniest. It literally got Darren and Ricky are in the same room next to each other. <laughs> We need we need two defenders like these yeah, two yeah, that halfway know, through seamless, can actually seamless. switch like left 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 centre back right centre back swap over like Jan and, and Toby, isn't they? Flexible as well, adaptable, flexible, yeah, good adaptable, talkers. Exactly. So yeah, they, there's lots of tests to come. There's lots of bumps in the road. The players yeah. need to be brave. The club needs to be brave. I think Ange will be brave with it. We have to be brave. We have to go through. As the as everything adapts and players are wheedled out and brought in, we have to go through with it. And you know what? If Romero does get the odd red card, uh, I think you just have to take that sometimes, Rick. I think because if you try and lose that fire in his belly, you're going to lose a hell of a lot of the player, hell of a lot yep. of the player until such times as he can actually channel that in the right way so uh yeah that's that, that's that's a watch this space one isn't it with him i totally agree yeah i do i mean look uh during that game of course the cell so and simon replaced madison and son the star 11 just got plenty of minutes in their legs so like to be a very different level you'd imagine of course 48 hours time at barcelona solomon's involvement the first involvement for solomon was to draw a save out from the goalkeeper before kane tapped in that rebound a little nod to the future as well as Dane Scarlett smashing a lovely finish with his left foot on the turn from Kolesesti's cross. So actually the final kick of the game. And we've got to say, it's been a tricky season last season for the Spurs Academy striker, but he just showed what talent he had with that turn, that finish, to make it 5-1 with the final kick of the game. Andrew's asked, 
that was your first experience of the Spurs Stadium. What did you make of it? He said, yeah, look, it's obviously a great stadium, a fantastic stadium, actually. It's actually my first visit here. And he was actually offered the chance and to have a tour during, I believe, the week, which he turned down. He wanted the game to be his first time at the stadium, which I thought was incredible, really. Tell Jimmy about the man. Um, he says, for a good cause, it was a great atmosphere inside the stadium as well. And again, another Ange quote before we do discuss the inevitable. He was asked, since the stadium is open, the Spurs fans have been able to see their team not really play attractive football. How important is it for you to make the fans feel finally at home here? He said, look, that's the responsibility you have when you manage any football club. The lifeblood of it is the supporters and you want to reward them for their faith and belief in the team. You can do that a number of ways. The best way is to have success. Every supporter craves that. They want to see their team winning and lifting trophies. I've got a tingle as I say this. Uh, the best way is, I say, to have that context when you play the game is certainly important. Certainly important for me. I want our fans to look forward to coming to the stadium, following their team. A big part of that experience, if we're playing the kind of football is, I want us to play. I want us all to feel they're a part of it. They'll be able to ride the wave of adrenaline that the team gives. The energy goes both ways. The supporters can give the team energy, but we can also give our supporters the energy by showing that we want to play the football that excites them, which again, I just think amazing words there for man to post a clock on. Uh, I've done it again. <laughs> Twice and I was tired two shows in a row. And Pastor Coglu, my wife, who is Greek, is battering me right now. Right. We've done this for for three months. She's battered me. And Pastor Coglu, we will get there. I'll tell you what. This Greek heritage, I'm going to be finished off. I've got family in Cyprus that are going to kill me for this. What we are going to do for all of your sake, we are going to go for our next break of the show. And we are discussing the hurricane debate. 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 It's one of those nights. The drinks are setting in, boys. The drinks are setting in. It's debate, you flaming galah. Get it right. Posta Coglu, you flaming galah. Come on. You're supposed I'll to be you. a podcaster. Now, look, come on. You're a come podcast. on, you're a podcaster. Come on. Right. <laughs> it is Harry Kane time, guys. It is Harry Kane time. Um, Harry Kane, of course, was replaced by Dane Scarlett. And again, I think Mitch Fretton put this. The heavens opened. Coincidence, maybe I think not. The entire stadium rise to applaud the England captain and the striker to acknowledge it and applaud the supporters as we walked off. Um, Kane, look, it's a difficult subject, one that we're going to try and do the best we can to kind of explain where things are at with regards to Harry Kane. Ricks, will come to you. Look, it took less than a minute for him to have a couple of efforts on goal. I think, look, no matter what happens, whether results improve, he'll get goals in this team. He scored, of course, scored four today. But, I mean, the uncertainty... It's deafening, isn't it? I mean, it's one of those things where at the end of the game, you saw Kane walk round to all sides of the pitch. And I will say this, that that's probably what Harry Kane does every home game, applauds the fans. And I wouldn't want to make a big deal out of that. And I'll bring on to Potter Coglu's quote shortly. But where do you think we are, Ricks, in this Harry Kane saga? And do you think we are nearing its conclusion one way or another at the moment? Ricks, for me, um, I've always felt that Harry ain't going nowhere. This, this year. And there, listen, there has been times where I have been a little bit shaky. So when he wasn't on any of the kind of the, 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 the promotional stuff for the tour, when it was Richarlison and Son, I think it was, I, I was kind of like, oh, because they tend to do that. They tend to take him away. They tend to like save themselves um, any type of embarrassment um, by taking him off stuff. But look, everything that I've seen, he ain't going nowhere, mate. I, I really believe that he ain't going nowhere. And <clears throat> every season we've had Harry Kane's leaving, every season we've had the media and the papers and the internet sell Harry Kane, ever since he wasn't a one-season wonder, he's been, he, he's been off, he's been going, and they've tried to sell him. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to be kind of con, you know, conspiracy theory-esque, right? But we all know that we're one of the haters club in the league. You know, the other teams, they don't like Tottenham, you know. And then you've got some of these ger German kind of Bayern fans that have jumped on the bandwagon and like, let him leave, free him. You owe him this, you owe him that. And I think it's all rubbish, mate. Honestly, I think it's all rubbish. I think that the one thing that has really swayed Kane to being open to a move, right, is that Man City move. The fact that it didn't happen at that point, I think we saw a lot in his body language, you know, even in the preseason where he didn't come back, you know, he had an extra week off or whatever the case may be. 
And there was a there was a difference in Kane. Even when he came back, there was a, he had to warm back into the team. Do you know what I mean? He didn't jump straight in and, and was the same old Harry. He had to warm back into the team. This year, I, I just don't see it. But I think that there, there, there are people within the England squad and there, there are friends like Carl Walker, who went to Man City and won everything. You know, Haaland's gone to uh, Man City last year. And then they've won every everything, and he scored goals goals galore. And maybe part of him was thinking that should have been me. Maybe part of him was thinking I should have been lifting those trophies as well. And maybe part of him was thinking when Bayern turn up, this is another opportunity for me to go and do that, to not miss out on trophies or on glory. But we all know as Tottenham fans that the one thing that Harry Kane wants to do is win at Spurs. He wants to lift a cup with the captain's armband on and a cockerel on his chest. Do you know what I mean? With with the Tottenham fans, supporters, roaring his name and singing his song as he lifts that cup. Do you know what I mean? Or, or ha- if we get to that piece of glory that they're behind him and he's with us and we're with them. I think it's amazing what the crowd done today for him. All of the songs that they sung to him, whether it was Don't Go or One of Our Own or anything like that, just giving him all the love because he's never going to get the same amount of love that he does at Tottenham anywhere else. I don't care what club he goes to. Now, for me, he came in as a as, as a youngster. We didn't pay no money for him. We didn't pay no money for him. So if he goes next year on a free, to me, it doesn't really matter. I, agree. I do agree that, on that. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing that comes in comes into play is if he goes somewhere like Chelsea and does a Campbell on us. Do you know what I mean? And that's what nobody wants. That's everybody's biggest fear. But Kane is not Campbell. All right, he's not. He's not. He's been here for too long. He he he, he bleeds blue and white. Do you know what I mean? So I don't see him doing that. But if he does, if he does, if we if it goes past this this uh, this transfer window deadline, then what you do is you offer him a new deal. One year, two year, three year deal with a with a buyout clause, and you make it very, very simple. You go, Harry, all right, cool, let's stay with us, but at the same time, you you're going to want us to get a bit for you, and you know we're going to want you to go wherever you want to go. So we'll put a release clause in, we'll put a contract out for two years, three years, and we'll see how it goes. Do you know what I mean? But if you want to stay after this season, if you if it goes swimmingly well and you enjoy the attacking football and you enjoy Madison putting it on a plate for you and you enjoy not only being the one to rely on, but Sonny can do something, Solomon can do something, Kulu can do something, Richarlison can do something, Saar can do something, Lacelso can do something. Like it's exciting right now. Do you know what I mean? As well as our inverted fullbacks and stuff like that, it's it's an exciting place to be where he could be the man with a captain's armband on. Everybody makes that mistake. They've made it for season in, season out that Hugo was our captain. Everyone forgot that. Everyone was like, Cage, your captain. It's like, no, he's the English captain, but he's not the Tottenham captain. Could you imagine him being a Tottenham captain and lifting the first trophy in bloody well ages? Like, that's something to hold on to. So for me, my heart of heart of hearts is that he ain't going nowhere. I think the only reason that he's open to go is because he missed out on glory at Man City. And part of him's like, is this my opportunity to go and get some? But if they pay the money, then that's a different uh, conversation. They haven't. They're not going to. They won't. So I don't think there's any discussion about it. I've tried to keep as calm as possible with this the whole way through. And it's got to today. And how long did he play for? 80 minutes? 75, 80 minutes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why would you sell a hundred million pound? Why would you play a hundred million pound asset for seventy five minutes where he could he could potentially get injured? And not going to happen. And you not know, Rick also what again today is a pro, you know guys he's made him captain. He's made him captain. He's given him what seventy five plus minutes. If you're going to do that a week before the start of the season, you wouldn't be giving that to a player if you generally feel he's going to go. I do. I now come over to you. This is the one thing that's been you know left a real sour my sour taste in my mouth today. I come away from that stadium. I'm really excited about the attacking brand of football. I'm really excited about the manager. I'm really excited about buying into Spurs again. And yet the ending, I'm seeing Spurs, in my opinion, now you've got to say he's one of Spurs' greatest ever players. Goals show that you that alone. And we're in this situation a week before the season, and we genuinely still don't know whether he's going to be a Tottenham player or not. You know, today he had a major influence on things. He's got four goals. Where are we, Dal? Tell me where we are in your mind on Ange, on Ange Postecoglou's Harry Kane as uh, everyone else has done a runner here, which obviously they're worried about what's going to come out of your mouth. 
<laughs> no, they're not running from that. I think we're all running to try and work out if we're the ones crackling. And everyone's trying to go, where's that crackle coming from? So audio fans, we're aware there is a crackle. We don't know where it's coming from. We'll fix it. Um, in terms of where I've been with this whole Kane situation, I've been very, very quiet. I said, what? Well, I've got asked direct questions. Is Kane going anywhere? And my answer has been, I have no evidence that he is going anywhere. And everyone who has had conversations with me, I give them this. 98% of what you're reading has come from German media. Most of it has come from the German media fueling the fire to get the player that they would like in their league. I get it. I can't speak for Harry Kane, but we as fans can speak to him. And if I was to speak to Harry Kane, what I would say is this. You're on the cusp of breaking Alan Shearer's record. People go, it's not about individual records. If he breaks Alan Shearer's record, becomes all-time Premiership goal scorer, Tottenham's goal scorer, and also England's goal scorer. That's a massive achievement. As Ricky quite rightly pointed out, he's got a chance to potentially win a trophy with this first side. People have spoke about, we owe Kane. Spurs, you owe him. We don't owe Kane a thing. And I mean this for the bottom of my heart. We don't owe him anything. In life, we have jobs to do. Kane's job is to score goals, play for Tottenham. And in his contract, there's nothing that says he must win a league by this point or win a cup by this point. It's a team sport. And he's part of the team that have failed. So part of Kane may want to win. He may want to still achieve those goals. And we all know as Spurs fans, if he goes Brian Munich and wins the Bundesliga, Every football fan in the world, before they celebrate him, will say he won it in the easiest league. Of course he won it. It's the easiest league. It doesn't really count as a big win. That's not really something to celebrate. He's got a team in, but it's in the easiest league. They've won it for the last seven, eight, nine, ten years. So, let's just go on the facts. He has still got a one-year contract to play for Tottenham Hotspur. He has not told anybody, vocally, he wants to go anywhere. The chairman of Spurs has not come out and said, I want to sell him. So right now, all I can go on is facts. And the fact is, Harry Kane is our captain. He is at Tottenham. He wore the shirt today. And I see him wearing it for the rest of the season. If that changes, then that's things that happen beyond our control. But I'm not getting all caught up in speculation and nonsense. Because that's why I took a pre-season. I wanted to relax. I wanted to chill out and let my mind be free and enjoy life. And what this has done, it's created a madness unnecessarily. Right now, Kane did his norm. Remember, as you said, Rick, he did his norm. He waved like he normally would. He did all the normal things. If anything in his heart was saying, this is the last time I'm going to play at this stadium, he would have done something different. Autopilot would have kicked in. The emotions would have got high. He would have had to have done something bigger for himself because this is my last moment. I'm going with facts. I see Kane dead for the rest of the season. I'll go with facts. No, D- both... doubt, doubt. Sh- share with the boys what you said about his celebration in case we get any body language yeah. experts. I know cracks, I know you're above me and you speak about body language. And people would always look at the celebration that it was the punch, but it was very muted, people would say. He didn't look like he was happy. When the players came around him, he wasn't smiling, he wasn't there. You know why? It's a pre-season friendly. He's going through the motions. He's building himself for the season. If he ran around the pit celebrating like he scored a goal that counted towards his record, I get it. But this doesn't count for anything. These goals get deleted once the season starts. So for Kane, it's about the system. As I said, when they celebrated, you could see the conversations. I was watching the conversations. It was, that was good. Did you see that? I saw the run. They were talking. It was like training still. And Kane was in that mode. He's working with the boys to go, this is working. I like where this is going. He's still got to work out how deep he goes. He's going to learn, I don't need to be that deep. I will get seven goals if I don't play next to Madison. So Madison can pass it to me. There's so much there that is the evidence that what I'm going on is what I can see and what is the truth of the matter rather than going on the fear and speculation. So you're going to ask me the direct question, Mr. Sachs. Is Kane going to be there next season for the the season coming? I'm going to say yes, because nothing has told me otherwise. Yeah, I've got to say, people find it really refreshing in the comments that both Ricks and Dow so far, you've only got off facts. You've only got off what we can see. Kane, of course, has tweeted tonight, and that's been Sunday evening, ramping it up. I don't know why you would do that if you're going to be at Bayern Munich in three or four days' time. That, That, to me, makes no sense whatsoever. Cracks. (laughs) Cracks. <laughs> Perhaps he's talking about the transfer fee. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he scored four today. He scored four today. I mean, again, 
you know, he was asked, I will say this, Ange, Post- Ange Postacoglu was asked, asked the question, um, would you tell people not to read too much into Kane upon the fans at the end? And said, you're reading to say yourself, aren't you? Again, I'm not going to tell people how to feel, what to read into at the end of the day. I don't even know what's in Harry's mind, let alone anyone else's. I think all these things will obviously play out over the next period. We'll do what happens from there. From my perspective, like I've said, I've got a team to build here. Today, show me that we've made some progress, but there's still a lot of work to do. There are areas today that I was, wasn't was delighted with. So we need to make sure we're focusing on them right. And we'll see what happens after that. And I've got to say, Cracks, you know, the more I think about this rationally, and I'm trying to be rational, you know, the guy cost us nothing. Mm-hmm. If he was to leave for nothing, is it really the end of the world? I mean, I got to agree with what Rick said. You know, this guy, for me, regardless of what many think Richarlison's a better fit for the system, Harry Kane is a fit for every single system in every single team under every single manager in every single team in the world, in the league. The guy guarantees you, what, 25 to 30 goals a season. I find it irrational that we're a week away before the season starts and we could sell Harry Kane. That's just my opinion. And many people say, get the 100 million. Well, look, no disrespect to Tottenham. Whilst their recruitment has improved under Paratage's period, there's no guarantee that 100 million will be spent wisely and we any better off. We know Spurs need centre-backs. For me, that should not be coming out of a fee for Harry Kane. That should be coming out of a fee that we've needed this summer. There's still 50 million there to draw mm. down from Enoch, which people seem to be forgetting about. There's still 50 mm. million sitting there somewhere. There should be even more money as well. There should be. The TV yes. rights are absolutely massive. Mm-hmm. So I've got, I've got to say, Cracks, at the moment for me, I'm uncomfortable about the situation. We're a week before the season starts. We've been here so many times from Berbatov to Modric to Carrick to Keane. So many wonderful players that have played for this football club. And we have a summer that's dominated by speculation. And it's not fair. It's not fair on the fans that don't know a week before the start of the season whether the star striker, whether the greatest player arguably in their history is going to be a Spurs player. It's not fair. And we mm. need clarity on it as soon as possible. I don't know where you stand it, Cracks. Well, the, the problem you've got, Rick, is if he does stay, um, th- this speculation, this uh, sort of Damocles, if you like, just hangs over the club. Week in, week out, talk sport, Sky Sports News every week. So Harry Kane stays. Where's he going to go next season? Uh, I mean, it would just it would just rumble on and rumble on and rumble on. And it will be, well, he can go, he can start speaking to clubs from January and he can go anywhere he likes next summer. And that's that's a toxic energy around the club. That, that we don't need, that's not fair to Ange trying to, you know, play football and answer questions about Tottenham Hotspur. Not Harry Kane, you know, this isn't Harry Kane FC. I know Pep said it was. Um, maybe Pep wasn't too far off the truth. Maybe by default, Kane's become too much of a focal point of this club and this and this team. And you can see why we are seen in the last show. You know, it's it's been like the Titanic and he's been a life raft in it, isn't he? Harry Kane. He's been the one thing you can all cling on to as as one disaster loomed to to another. The money involved, um, as like people saying, oh it's hundred million pounds. What do you care? You ain't seeing it. You're going in your bank account. Tell you now, Daniel Levy's not giving you a refund on any of your tickets or season tickets or giving you a free shirt or even a lollipop. I can tell you that right now. So the money, forget it, because we got bucket loads of it anyway. Like you said, Rick, the more comes in off the TV, comes in from this, comes in from that. My fear is if he's if he stays, he can go anywhere next season. And if in his heart of heart he does want to go then we've got to watch him at Man U or or maybe even Chelsea. W- would he do that? Would he go to Chelsea? I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know how upset he is that he didn't get his move to Man City. Only Harry Kane would know that. And he might well just give a big F you to the club and go, right, well, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with the way I've been treated. I'm going to go Chelsea because they've made me a big offer. Then we've kicked this can down the road of some pain. So there's some there's some merit in saying, well, if he goes now, he goes off to the Bundesliga. Who cares about that? I mean, the Bundesliga last season, let, let's be honest, outside of Germany, 
No one cares. No one gives a damn about it. Last season, the Bundesliga had an incredible finish to it. Um, you know, it all came down to the last day. How much of that did you see in the media? What had gone in Germany? There was a cursory mention that it was getting a little bit excited. Otherwise, it's a dull procession of Munich winning the league. You know, it's 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 like going to Celtic. Let's let's face it. Or, or well, at least in Scotland, there's Celtic and Rangers. I mean, in Germany, it's just Munich. How many kids do you see walking around in Bayern shirts? You don't see it. So, I mean, there's there's a little bit of merit to say, okay, you want to go to uh, Munich because they're the only show in town that's put a bid in. Off you trot. And then we don't have to see him every week scoring against us or doing anything, really, to be honest. You know, we, we, we cursory glances at it. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Rick, I, I want him to stay. I like him. I do. I love him. You know, fantastic player. You know my thoughts on him and where he is in the world class part of things. But for us, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I really do want him to stay. But if he does, it has to be on a new new contract. It has to be on a new contract. And if he's not going to sign it before this season starts, if the, if it's rejected and he wants to stay this final year. It has to be on a new new contract because I just can't. Uh, it's unfair to keep having this toxicity oh, in the, the media and yeah. the where's he going to go then? Where's he going to go then? Where's he going to go then? Whilst Talk Sport and Sky Sports News and everybody else uh, across social media earns a living off the back of it, reporting and gossiping and and eulogising and uh, and speculating about it all. So. Um, it just it comes down to it comes down to numbers now. If the money's right and he doesn't want to sign, he goes. If he if he does want to sign, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and, and stay. And that and that's where it is. You know, I don't I, I don't think there's any emotion in all this. To be honest, not with football, not with not with the money. It just comes down to cold hard facts now i'm still expecting wednesday one of the saudi teams to come in and just offer a billion pounds for him and then he'll just go i mean that's the crazy world of football we live in so yeah. so so let's so let's see but you know what if he does go rick i'm quite confident that Ange and this team will find solutions to the goals that he provides and will find a way around it that dare i say i'll probably get some stick for this there'll be a few players that will step out of the shadows, actually step up and come up to the plate and step out of the shadow that Harry Kane has, has put over this club. Maybe uh, shadow's not the right word because that makes it sound like a bad thing, but I don't mean that as in a bad way. He is He, he just wields so much power, if you like, and so much of the narrative around Spurs by not by design, just by default. He he hasn't he hasn't created that. It's created itself. So if he does go, maybe some of those come out of the shadows, step up, and you know, uh, and and we and we go from there. It's shade somebody's just put on yeah. on the screen. Don't forget, we lost him to injury a couple of times. Twenty eighteen, seventeen, and nineteen. We got to, we got to, we got to a Champions League final about him. People forget that. There you go. We didn't yeah. look too. We didn't look too lost when we lost him a couple of times to injury. So mm. you know, yeah. it's not. It's not the end of the world. It, it really yeah. isn't. But so I think we're in. A, I think we're in a pretty decent position, to be honest. In some respects, as long as long as Ange Ball works and those players step up and and fill the void. Just to confirm, and, and you, Rick, go on, Rick. Go on. No, no I was just going to say, you know what? You, you know what? It's like, I, I actually think, and I'll put this out to, to, to the boys and to the viewers as well, make a comment, right? But don't you think Man City and Bayern have been utterly disrespectful? If we talk about a 100 million British pounds, all right, for a guarantee 25 to 30 goals a season, that's what you get with Harry Kane. Guarantee, guarantee. If you don't get 25 to 30 goals a season, you get your money back. It's a guarantee. Do you know what I mean? And the fact that they have tried to lowball us and they have tried to play the, <laughs> the Charlie Big Potatoes of, of look, we're up here and you're down here and you've got a player that's too good for you, so he should come here. Like, I think that they've been disrespectful. Hazard, at, at, at 29, a, a year younger, he went for 120 
to Real Madrid. <laughs> they've just put um, a, a free, and I know it's a different age bracket, but they've just put in a three hundred million pound bid for Mbappe in his last year. What are we talking about here? <clears throat> and you can't bring out one hundred million pounds for Harry Class A Kane, Harry Guaranteed Kane. You've got to be joking. So they've they've tried it, but they've been absolutely disrespectful because a hundred million pounds for Harry Kane in his last year at 30 years old, is still damn cheap for what he gives you and what he brings to your side. So come in, pay the money, or see you later, do what you got to do. But I'm done with, with other sides trying to come to Tottenham and disrespect us yeah. and him and Harry Kane. I've got to say, bro, it's incredibly boring. Rick, as well. just, do you know what? Subject. Uh, love, love or loathe Daniel Levy, when it mm. comes to this scenario... Yeah, I've got to say, I absolutely love him because the Germans and especially Munich are so cool and calm and collected and calculated and they are absolutely losing their minds over this. I've never seen Munich so tied up in knots. Their press, like Bayern fans, there's even been a couple in the comments tonight, Bayern fans on like fan accounts on Twitter, on X or whatever you want to call it absolutely losing it and Daniel's just hopped on a plane and he's off to sit on a it's a small world at Disney World isn't it he's 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 sitting in like with his kids going around it's a small small world at Disneyland Florida whilst the Germans are absolutely losing their minds over it so like chapeau chapeau to Daniel Levy they are, they are properly properly rattled so you do love to see it he's the master of it Daniel Levy he, he is sometimes to the to his own detriment and the club's detriment, but I'm telling you, don't don't get don't get into an ass kicking competition with Daniel Levy. The man's like an octopus. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, cracks Dow and Ricks. They both stated from their perspective they expect Harry Kane to stay. He scored four goals in this friendly. I, I see this becoming more and more. More, just more, and more unrealistic that he leaves the club. Where, where do you stand for your yes or no? Will Harry be here for Brentford? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yep. Dale. Yep. R- cracks. Got to move on from the subject. What are you saying? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think he stays now. To be honest, yeah, I think it would have been done. Tire kickers, them and Man City tire kickers, pay the money or get out of town. See you later. They haven't done it. Simple as that. So. Yep. Well, Ange Postacoglu concluded on the Harry Kane situation for this uh, show itself. He said, look, I certainly want to talk about contracted players at other clubs. I dig at Bayern Munich there. Bayern, I'm not there, so they can do what they want. There's no doubt that I would use Harry against Brentford. That's Postacoglu's own words. I didn't need the game against Shatner to tell me that. He's world-class. The way this team will play will help him as well. We'll create a lot of chances for him. From my perspective, I don't know what deadlines mean. We know there's one deadline. That's the end of the transfer window, which I thought, again, was really put well by Postacoglu. He was asked, how do you go about replacing a player who scores the majority of the goals? He said, look, again, I'll deal with that when the time comes, you know. I've always had these contingencies anyway in my head. Whether that's Harry or anyone else, there's no guarantees about anyone. There's all sorts of things that can happen that can affect your planning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time or energy thinking about something that may or may not happen. Because again, I don't have that luxury. It'd be different if I was in my third or fourth year at the club. If we'd already established the way we play, established the squad, and that was my major issue or only an issue that maybe I'd be a little bit more obsessive about it. But right now, I'm trying to build a style of team, a squad of players, different training. There's so many things that are really important that I can't be distracted by one or two of other things. And I've got to say again, Poster Coglu has handled this situation just so superbly. A man that's been here for, what, less than three months to have to come in and let's be honest about it, deal with not only a fractured squad, a fractured fan base as well. I think the guy has been a real, real breath of fresh air. And that's, I think that's what, another reason why fans are feeling really optimistic, despite the fact, again, I'll say, we have not addressed still the area that we need to do in the squad, which we know Spurs are getting around to doing it. But look, they haven't addressed it just yet. It will be addressed as we hope before, I say, in these next few days. But look, the Harry Kane situation, hope we won't have long to run. Um, as we look to close this show, just a few words on some of the players that play today. Vicario, look, you maybe argue could do a little bit better with one of the one of the moments of the game. But look, I think to be fair, Reflex, he shows himself to be a good goalkeeper. I've said this again about Vicario, project goalkeeper, going to take time. That might upset people me saying that, but I do honestly think it's going to take some time for him. Emerson Royale, look, a real, again, another energetic display down that right flank. I've got to say, I think really for him, 
he's going to make that spot his own at the moment. I think Porro will have to find his way into that squad. Again, he's been at fault for a couple of goals in pre-seasons. Ben Davis, to give Ben his props, he done well until that final moment of the first half where he was beaten by Kelsey to the header. Romero, we've discussed, of course, a bit of a late lunge. As Crack says, we need to control that from him. Uh, Destiny Adogi, we could want to give Destiny more time, but as we said during the show, a really, really bright performance, one that we hope is going to be inspiring for to come. Uh, Hoybier, again, we'll wait to see what happens with his future. Pat Matasar, wish we gave him more time tonight. A real, real young star in the making. A eye-catching display, one to keep an eye on. I said it before, if you're going to sell Pierre Hoybier, I wouldn't be massively going up to go and get someone else in the in the market. I think I'd give Pat Matasar that time out there to really have a chance to prove himself. Because I think, again, today shows, real bright player, loves to be on the ball, really composed and one to keep an eye on for the future. Dian Kulisewski, back to himself, I thought, in the second half of the game. Maybe not as much the first half, but look, with more time, same as Sonny, they'll find their way. The Celso came on for 15 minutes, added some fresh legs, done fairly well. Again, he might give Andrew a headache for Brentford. And finally, Manor Solomon, bright cameo from him. And again, his shot leading to a goal. So there's plenty of options for Ange Postacoglu. But boys, it has been an absolute pleasure. Before we close it, Final question to you all, starting with you, Dan, uh, Dow. Do you feel now we are season ish ready? Barcelona to come on Tuesday. Have we got enough time now to really, in your opinion, see the best of Tottenham to come? We are we're on the cusp of being season ready because we need that one more game. And I totally think if we are bringing in a few more faces, hopefully we can get some of them involved in that game or one of them involved in a game on Tuesday or around the squad by then. I think this season. In terms of season ready, what I would say to everyone is maybe just lower the expectation level of what you think Tottenham would achieve this year and then we could be season ready. We've used the term project today. You said about project goalkeeper. I won't say we have a project manager, but I would say very much I like the new project Tottenham and I could get down with this project. Now, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. You are back with us for actually Ange Postacoglu's first game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at home is in Manchester United. Dow, ahead of that game, where can we find your insightful thoughts on Tottenham across the socials, my friend? Well, once the season starts, I'll be back in action. So original Hartman over all social medias and probably selling you something in an ad break. Dow, absolute pleasure, mate. It's like you've never been away, but look, the football is going to be a lot more joyous. Thank you so much, bud. Ricks, always a pleasure having you on last one on Spurs. But by the time we next speak, Rick, which will be next week, Spurs might have a centre-back or two come in. Spurs are closing on Mackie, Mickey van der Ven. Mackie van der Ven. There you go. another butcher of a name. Mickey van der Ven coming through the door, hopefully by this time next week, in attendance at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium earlier today. Rick, now we've had that nearly two-hour therapy session, bless you, and we can't do four hours, so don't get that ball in play for four hours. Um, Rick, how are we feeling now about everything? Are we excited for what's to come? Oh, I'm a lot more excited. From what I'm seeing, there's a lot more green shoots. There's a, you know, we're we're playing in a way in which we can actually get behind. And if they go out and play like they, like they look like they're going to play, like they did today, and if they continue to progress that, even the days that we we get done, we we can handle that. Do you know what I mean? We can take that on the chin and go, no, all right, boys, as long as you get yourselves back up and you go and play the same way, with the same intensity, with the same heart, with the same hunger, and and in the same Ange Postacoglu way then let's, let's crack on. And I'm down for that, man. I'm, I'm much more excited. I'm much more optimistic about what this season can bring um, right now under Ange and what's happening with this squad. This squad looks fresher. It looks hungrier, you know. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we get across the line the signings that we need and that we want, and then we can crack on. That's, that, as soon as we get those defenders in, and that's why I, I personally haven't, uh, retweeted any Fabrizio Romano tweets. Here we goes the whole <laughs> transfer window because I'm waiting until they hold the shirt because anything can happen at Tottenham. So as soon as they're holding the shirt, as soon as it's been rubber stamped, oh the heart go, man, <laughs> heart man's holding the shirt. As soon as they're holding the shirt and they've signed on the dotted line, those two centre backs, I'll be a really happier guy, a more a more, more, um, more kind of solid going into it. But it's happening. 
and we're working towards it. And I'm loving what Angie's bringing, what he's saying, what he's doing, how he's reacting to all of the ups, downs, and the lefts and the rights. I think we're in a much better position than we was in the last couple of seasons. And we've only seen this much of the football. We've only seen this much of what Ange can bring and what these boys can bring underneath this, uh, under this new system. So I'm super optimistic. My positive level, my positivity level is back up. Yeah, it's been turned back up. So I'm I'm uh, ready to go into the season. Let's bloody well have it. Always an honour and a pleasure being on. And with you, fantastic gentlemen, I've had such a giggle. So I look forward to the next one, gents. Bless you, my man. Thank you so much. Ricky Jane, all across, across the socials. Make sure, again, Ricks, lots of love for you, my man. Love having you on last one on Spurs. And love again, you. the optimism is there for all to see. Cracks, bless you for you. You've got annual leave on Tuesday because you're back with us on <clears> Sunday. We're trying <throat> to dish this out to be fair to everybody so everyone can uh, have their take of all things top and also get their breath back for what's going to be a massive season. You're massively, of course, part of what's to come, Rich. Bless you for everything. Rich, how do you feel now? One week to go before the start. You'll be with us for the start against Brentford. Do you feel ready? Well, listen, a little big up as well to Dane Scarlett that came on and that left foot shot into the Thank top you. corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if he if he can pull that out of the bag every week, Harry Kane, I hope you enjoy your schnitzel and leather suits <laughs> that you've got your wear and your umpa band and, and craft work concerts. Because no, he was oh, seriously that that's a strike. That's a proper, proper strike. And you know, if that's what's coming through, then that there there again is another bright future. So uh pre like you said at the at the start of this little bit, Rick, pre-season, maybe it's not enough, but I'm kind of seeing this whole season as a pre-season. It's going to be a lot of bringing through players, a lot of moulding, a lot of gelling, a lot of learning. We've only got to be eighth from last season and actually play some football that entertains and puts a smile on the face. For this, it's a free hit this first season. Just be eighth, just put smiles on faces and play a bit of football that we want to watch. And it's progression. That that is that that's progression for me. So this whole season is a pre-season. And I see Michael says he loves craft work in the comments. So do I. I've been to see him three times. What a band. <laughs> but they're still German and they're being disrespectful and out of order. <laughs> like, turned into the pub landlord now, and I. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i've got to say boys getting us all together like this is obviously a pleasure it's always better when we've got a decent result and look, let's hope fingers crossed we have got some excitement to come because i think as spurs fans we're well overdue some excitement and i think again like once we get this situation resolved around obviously harry we can look forward to having a really really good season that's the one thing i think at the moment is that once we've you know dealt with that and we can try and, like I say, bring the focus back onto football. Because I think that's the whole point tonight is that we didn't want to bring the Kane situation right to the very start of the show. It wouldn't be fair on listeners and viewers that, as I think Crack says, in the mainstream media, it gets so much coverage where it is, quite frankly, a bit boring as well. You know, people don't want to keep listening to the same old headlines. Is he standing? Is he going? There's so much more to enjoy about what we've got with this team. New manager, new style of football, new players, new philosophy. That Why can't we enjoy everything else that's going on around Tottenham and deal with that? when we need to deal with that. Thank you so much. Honestly, from wonderful Richard Cracknell. Rich, thank you so much, my friend. Really appreciate it, bud. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, everybody, and the comments and the amount of people oh, that have, uh, thank you that so have much. come in. And uh, that... Ricky and Hartman, I hear room service is coming in five <laughs> minutes. Bottle of champagne. Turn turn the corner of the, uh, of the duvet down. Little mint, little mint on the pillar. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. I, okay. I hear they've. I hear they've got the presidential suite at the travel lodge. <laughs> it's got the water bed. Ah, oh, that's yeah. A honeymoon suite at the Premier Inn. I'm living the dream right now. <laughs> Middle of the dream. Rick Stale, thank you so much, boys. Always a pleasure. Oh. Thank you so much for your time, lads. It's no, I love every time, man. Always Bless an honour and a pleasure. Thank you Let's so much, guys. Thank you so much for all your support. A very just quick reminder, NordVPN, if you're looking for, of course, Barcelona's game to come up, you can use that code, code LWS to get you a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, plus one month for free and a bonus gift. Make sure, like I say, you follow that to have your opportunity to watch that Barcelona stream. But from the wonderful Richard Cracknell, from the superb Ricky Jane Wood, from the brilliant Darren Hartman. Guys, I've been the last one on Spurs. Thank you for all your incredible support. Keep safe, keep well, and as always, come on you Spurs.